What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Tastes like music. Jason and Joe here. Side three of Arctic Monkeys Week. Check out the albums ranked video that we did, as well as our top 10 songs. Side three, we usually take the band that we're discussing that week and, and come up with some kind of list. Uh, we're not doing a list this week. We're just discussing uh, the idea of like what the last great mainstream rock record was. Kind of, um, you know, thinking about AM being such a massive success and and wondering if there really has been a record since then that has had similar success aside from, you know, rock bands that aren't really rock bands like Imagine Dragons and stuff like that. And I don't know, is there, I mean, thinking backwards from AM, the last kind of ones before that, I would think of like uh, Kings of Leon, Only by the Night, uh, maybe... I mean, arguable how mainstream it is, but like Vampire Weekend. Yeah, I mean, there was some stuff that was, it's hard to determine like what counts as a rock album because there were some like Fallout Boy songs, I think like 2015, you got like Centuries and uh, Uma Thurman, which kind of skirt the line with like sampling and guitars that you know made the charts i don't know if you'd really say they're great rock albums because they're not you know they're not really rock they're mostly like emo pop and once you got to those albums i don't know what the hell they were doing that's a totally different genre i think altogether you can't include imagine dragons because they suck too much the black keys kind of had already peaked and you know fallen away at this point it's i mean it's tough like you had um 21 pilots but again they're so like not rock that i wouldn't want to include them in any list i'm trying to think of like my album of the year lists and like what was up near the top that might constitute as mainstream enough to mention like maybe the war on drugs but I don't know how really mainstream they were. Not, not probably not in the same way that Arctic Monkeys was. And... No, you have to sell like more than ten thousand copies, I think, of an album to be considered. I don't know how many they they, they can't sell that many, uh, despite me liking them, not putting them down or anything. Uh, I mean, you had just a bunch of Muse songs chart, but probably not. Not after like 2012, I don't think. I think no. maybe I don't think Dead Inside ever quite made the Billboard Hot 100. Uh, Madness charted, but that was 2012, so that was before Arctic Monkeys. Uh, was Arctic Monkeys the, the death knoll for rock and roll completely? Unless you count like Bastille, I think they had a, a hit or two after. Yeah, you had that wave of like uh, bands like that that were kind of like indie but straddling pop and mainstream success. I would Tame Impala count, maybe. Maybe, but again, I mean, did they actually chart anything, or was that more just like hype? Yeah, and like, like... I feel like Elephant was huge, but that was I think that was two thousand eleven. So like that was before Arctic Monkeys again. I don't think there's anything after like Mumford and Sons and all that crap was 2012, like that weird folk, whatever the hell that was with like Lumineers and whatever. Hey, ho, who did? Hey, ho, Lumineers, Lumineers. Yeah, they stink. But that was like 2011. Uh, Shut Up and Dance was probably... Those does kind of rock. I, I I just thought of the answer. I know what it is. Oh, what is it? It's guts. Oh well, of course. <laughs> We've established that Olivia Rodrigo is rock. You can't yeah. take that away from her. Yeah, I don't know. I, I think it, it all depends what you count as mainstream and what you count as rock, and what is it not rock and stuff like that. But I think as far as like slam dunk in all of those categories i think am definitely rock definitely was mainstream sold a ton of copies 
And yeah, maybe the last, the last of a dying breed. Dead breed, probably. Kind of, I, I don't. I'm trying to think if there's anyone besides Olivia that could possibly kind of break back in. You would have thought maybe Foo Fighters had a chance just because of their whole story, but I don't think anything from that album charted, uh, despite all the critical acclaim. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, um, I think we're at a point now where even if all of the remaining rock fans like something like the Foo Fighters record or whatever other rock record is out at the time, even the rock fans, you know, listening to it and being like talked about and reviewed well, that's still not enough to make it a mainstream hit at this point. No, it has to be TikTok uh, spurred to to chart or anything. I, get, I, I did think of one possibly other one that kind of skirts the bounds of rock and roll. But I, I think it it may count um, Miley Cyrus, her 80s rock album. That, that was pretty rock and roll. Um, Plastic Hearts in 2020. I, I mean, it's more rock and roll than Fall Out Boy or Imagine Dragons. It might not be like AM level, but it actually had some rock and some you know big guitars on it. I think if Olivia Rodrigo counts, it probably counts. Olivia Rodrigo probably doesn't count. <laughs> <laughs> this one's right on the edge, but I think I think if you want to throw in an album that mostly leans on guitar, I think Plastic Hearts kind of kind of works, kind of does it. All right. Well, let us know what we're forgetting. We might be forgetting some big ones. Who knows? We did know prep for this. Uh, just winging it here. What do you think was the last meaningful mainstream rock record? Guitar forward, actual rock. Um, and will it be the last? Uh, let us know. Hit the like button. Subscribe. Check out Patreon. Check out Instagram. All that stuff. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.